actor, director, writer, producer, editor, cast and director Eric Rivas has worn many different hats on movie sets. Now the filmmaker is back with a new project that he hopes will make people think differently. Now here's a peek at Duke of New York. Sound. Stay. That's life. Lights all good, we got Twilight. Quiet on the set. And action. Well, joining us this morning with all the action we need is Brooklyn's very own Mr. Eric Riva. What's up? Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning Eric. How are you? So I'm, I'm going to be singing your praises about this okay. movie, but should I just sing a different kind of song? Because we're celebrating something else this week, aren't we? Right. It's my birthday. I mean, maybe I deserve it. I'm not sure. I know. So do you want the regular happy birthday uh, song? Or do you want the Stevie Wonder version? Or do you want the 50 Cent the Stevie, version? The Stevie, the Stevie Wonder version. Okay, now you're going to put me in trouble. Unless the OG Stevie. one is better. If the OG one's better, I want yours. No, there's no OG one. I was just going to say, happy birthday, okay. Eric Rivas. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, do. And, and I really do. Thank you. We appreciate that you appreciate it. But next time you're going, to, going away, because we know you're away for your birthday, you're on a, on, you. a, on a lovely like island right now. So invite us to go with right. you. <laughs> yes. I should have. Okay. But, but, but we know we're gonna, with Marcia, yeah, but we know we're going to be seeing you, though, because you, uh, the premiere of the movie is coming up. And, and from what we yes. saw in that clip, it's, we're watching the making of a movie in this movie, and it also touches on a very, very important situation, a, a very important sentiment, a very, like a serious issue that we had here right in New York City. So as a New yes. Yorker, talk to us about why it's important for you to use your voice to shed light on these issues. Okay, um, during the pandemic, you know, there was a rise in Asian hate. Now, coincidentally, I had been making a film that this film was actually conceived about 10 years ago. I had a Japanese friend, and he was an actor, and I really wanted to get him a role. So I just thought, what if I'm a broke director, which is, was kind of true, you know, time I'm broke, and I'm trying to make it through, and they offer me 20000 and and they say to me, get me an Asian actor, but make sure he doesn't know any martial arts. So I go out, and I get my friend, and I bring him to the set, and when we get out to set, it's sort of like everybody looks at him, that movie, um, uh, what is it, with uh, Schwarzenegger, Predator. Mm -hmm. All those guys with muscles, Carl Weathers, all of them, they were all out there. And I, and I say to him, I, something's wrong here. I, I think we got to get out of here. And we realize they really just want to kill a person on film, kill a person. And he happens to know martial arts, and you know he's in the jungle fighting and beating everybody. Long story short, I was remaking that film, but as the pandemic went on with all of like people attacking Chinese for many things, for, for saying that they brought the coronavirus, for just seeing in the news people hitting them for no reason, uh, spitting on them, attacking them. I said to myself, you know what, this is, this is like almost like what's going on. And I said to myself, I've got to put that into the film. So the film is about a sick producer, Michael Musto, from the village mm -hmm. voice, you might know him. Yes, he and he wants to kill an Asian actor on film with his whole, you know, his whole crew, Rachel Kane and Eddie went there's Angel Salazar from Scarface, and they want to kill an Asian on film. And, uh, of course, you know, they don't want to destroy the plot, but, yeah, you don't. know, let's just say that, you know. You know, yeah. you know how okay. people get when you, when you have all these, you spoil a movie for them, they get upset. We don't want exactly, anyone getting upset for you. Right, to exactly, the movie. I don't want to do that. All right, so Duke of New York. <laughs> exactly. It's probably like it, it filmed in New York. You're you're from New York, so where, and and it's yes. kind of like a, we see like different parts of the city yes. in it. Yes. So this, so this, this where was, did you shoot? Okay, this was like my tribute to New York City because the streets were empty. Cuomo says, "Don't go out." And I said to myself, "Well, you know, let, let's just let's go shoot really quickly." And they tell us to leave, we leave. But everywhere you went, the city, the lights were glistening, but nobody was there. So we're fighting in front of Dumbo, the Brooklyn Bridge. We're fighting in front of uh, Grand, uh, Grand Central Station. Uh, we were, it's empty on the ramp. I mean, the, the, the fights on the FDR Drive. You know, like, there were places that were really empty and, and ghostly. And it was like that movie, The Warriors, the 1979 cult classic that we, mm -hmm. we, many of us loved that grew up in Brooklyn. So, yes, this was a total assessment of New York City during that time as a character. The pandemic was a background character to the whole situation, along with the message about stopping Asian hate, that we, we, we don't want that to continue. And we were doing it in our way. 
Uh, I'm going to tell you, you do things your way clearly because you were like, Cuomo said, don't go out. You're like, I'm going to shoot a movie. And then to think of the fact <laughs> that you didn't even have any formal uh, film training and you're here making all these movies, taking on all these right, roles right, and bringing right. us films like Duke of New York, which, by the way, I hear you have a special screening happening. Uh, wh wh when is it? Yes, June 30th at 730 at the Producers Club. And we are on Amazon now, if you look for us, Duke of New York. All right, so, so, so Mr. Rivas, I, like, there are so many aspiring filmmakers out there who might be saying, how does this guy do it? How did he do it? Like, you have to have faced so many challenges and continue to face challenges, but, but yet you keep going. So what is the one advice I, you would want to give those out there that want to walk in your shoes one day? There's no money needed to have vision. If you have a vision, it's all about getting your vision out. And you'll find the magic in people like my camera person, Martina Neal, Antonio Serrano that shoots with me, my friend Jason Chaos, who's a brilliant, he does makeup and he acts and he makes music and Smiley Sekic, Ismail Sekic, one of the greatest rappers out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, just great acting. You know, all these people are on fire and with your vision and with all this fire, you're really not talking about money. You're not talking about a budget. You're not talking about cameras and equipment you're talking about feeling and emotion you could do anything so mm -hmm. if you have a vision you can make a movie oh says says the king himself thank you so much happy birthday to you thank you we're going to be you celebrating so some more I for the premiere it. everyone at home duke of new york is it. now on amazon there's also a special screening as mr rivas told us a week from today on thursday june 30th at 7 30 p.m at the producers club sir we'll see you when you get back stop abandoning us and going to thank you fancy locations and partying without us Not well okay. i look forward to you coming and All next right. year i'm definitely gonna set it up okay oh okay cool thank nice you. to meet you bye i appreciate it nice Anytime. to meet you bye, -bye.